Linux maintenance. Oh my god. What? You have to maintain Linux? I thought it just always worked. Well, for the most part, you're right, but... What about all that stuff that you're used to doing in Windows? What about defragmenting the drive, cleaning the temporary files, maybe cleaning the registry? No, just kidding. You don't have to do any of those things. This is Linux. However, there are some things that you need to do to keep your Linux session going perfectly, flawlessly smooth as you upgrade and use it for years to come. Well, these tips might help you out uh, keeping that Linux install running tip-top shape. However, uh, like I said, Linux for the most part does just run, but these things will help you out along the way. So a couple things to touch on before we jump into the desktop here. Uh, first off, I said you don't have to clean your temporary files. Well, the dash TMP folder is regularly auto cleaned in pretty much every Linux distribution out there. That's pretty cool. You don't have to do anything. It does it for you, which is even better. And as I said before, there is no registry. There's no cleaning the registry. There's no bloating of the registry as you install more programs. None of that exists in Linux. And then finally, there's no defrag. Well, when I say defrag, that's uh, the old school hard drives. You had to defrag them in Windows because the NTFS file system kind of just lagged after a little bit because the blocks weren't allocated the proper way. You don't have to worry about that in Linux because guess what? It doesn't use NTFS. NTFS is a crappy file system. It's only a little bit better than FAT, which is even a worse file system. So uh, Linux doesn't use any of these things, so we're good. We don't have to defrag our drives. Everything's usually running ext4 or betterfs or zfs or you name a file system in Linux. It's going to be better than the Windows counterpart just because, well, it's set up to be better. So with all that out of the way, these things are a thing of the past. You can forget about it and wipe it from your mind or nightmares, whichever, uh, you know, they reside. Mine's kind of both. And move on with this video and we'll jump over to the desktop and actually do some proper Linux maintenance. Okay, so proper Linux maintenance here. Let's start off with number one, the very first thing before you make any system change, you do any kind of maintenance, you do anything to your Linux install, check your backups. That may be just the system admin in me coming out, but check your backups is so important. I recommend Time Shift. I made a video about it, so if you haven't, uh, I'll leave it up in here in the title card. Just check it out. So if you look, Time Shift, it's going on a schedule every single day that I have this computer running out here and I leave it up and going, it does a snapshot. So we have six snapshots in the queue. I haven't really done anything to this computer in a while. So we're good. I feel very comfortable about proceeding. If I did not, I would go ahead and go back here and do another snapshot. Next up, we're gonna install something called BleachBit. So I think I, I might already have this, but if you don't, we can install it. Let's go ahead and take a look here. It doesn't look like I actually have installed BleachBit yet, so we'll go ahead and open up our terminal. And I'll leave like the GitHub project so you can easily install it on your distro, but we're just gonna go ahead and install BleachBit. It'll say, do you wanna install this package? Yes, um, chances are, you already have it installed, apt install, I think BleachBit will do it on, on Ubuntu or Debian based install. We'll launch BleachBit. So you can check for updates, all this. I usually just leave this as default and hit continue. Then from here, I like to go ahead and select most of everything. If you click right here where it has this, it'll highlight everything below. So we can click this and say, okay. And then you can select different things. Like if I wanted to keep passwords, I can totally do that. Uh, cash, cookies, all of that. It'll clear out all that stuff. Deep scan, I typically leave this one off unless there's something I really, really want to clear out and scrub. Uh, easy tag, I'll go ahead and do. And then you can kind of just go through all these. Uh, LibreOffice, this is the Office suite on here. It'll clear out any old usage. Go ahead and hit OK. Regarding system free disk space, this actually clears out the free disk space. So uh, it's very important to if you don't need this, which most people don't, I would uncheck the free disk space option. Most of the other stuff, I just leave in here, that's fine. Um, depending on what your needs are, you, you can do the same. And I also uncheck memory, just because, you know, don't really need this, but if you leave your system up for a long period of time, I would probably leave memory checked. 
and then thumbnail cache, uh, Vim history, and VLC. So with this, we can just hit clean and hit delete. This goes through, clears out any old cache. As you see, Chromium has a lot of cache on this system. Um, and if you run into a whole bunch of permission denied errors, let's go ahead and cancel this. Like this right here is actually not any good. So if we go sudo bleach bit, we'll type in our username and then we'll close this out. And this one will clear out this as well. So uh, we can clear out the system a little bit better using sudo on this. So we, we don't want to do that. Localizations we won't want to do. Memory we don't want to do. So this leaves all the basic options in here and we can go ahead and clean this and hit delete. So this will clear out all that extra stuff that we were talking about. So with that, we've pretty much cleaned out all the temporary cache and stuff that accumulates on your system. And now we want to go ahead and move forward here with the next option. Now the next one is actually our repository. So it's good every once in a while to go ahead, do an update. So for Arch-based users, it's just gonna be Pac-Man, SYU, or actually pseudo Pac-Man SYU. And this is gonna update your system. It's gonna update the packages and those types of things um, and kind of clean out a whole bunch of stuff. So obviously there's a bunch of updates. We probably should go ahead and do these and it'll go ahead and go through, download all these, install them. We'll get new graphics drivers. We'll get a lot of other things in here. And then always, whenever you have like a uh, a graphics driver or those types of things in here. I like to give it a full reboot just to have a, a full understanding because I see a whole bunch of KDE utilities, which is my desktop environment on this machine updating. We need to make sure that all that took as well. So uh, I'll reboot after this just to make sure that we have a nice clean system, but running an update. And if you're on a Debian based system, running sudo apt update is always a good thing. Um, after running your backups because you never know what's going to be updated on here sometimes uh, and a lot of times most people won't check all the packages so i like to update my system quite often because i always like to have the latest and greatest but sometimes if you're doing like a production machine and these types of things i would never run an update on that i'd want that kind of stuck in time so for that type of machine i probably wouldn't do this or i'd pin a lot of important packages. So if I was using, let's say, a specific Linux kernel, I'd pin that package. If I was using a specific uh, editor, let's say I had a good version of Caden Live and I didn't want it to change, I would hold that package for that respective uh, distribution. But once you've gotten that, I still highly recommend doing full updates because there's security patches and other things that help secure the machine. So doing updates is typically a good thing. You just gotta do them properly. Make sure you have good backups because an update could mess up things. And two, also uh, pin and hold back packages that you don't want to change. Uh, very important. So with this, let's go ahead and reboot this machine and see how it did as far as the update process. So there we go. We're back on our desktop. Everything looks good here. Um, I'm just going to test out a couple things. All my hotkeys are working. Um, everything looks okay. I always recommend pulling up a sample program or a game, especially after a message driver or a graphic driver update. So if you have NVIDIA and update your NVIDIA driver, definitely look to make sure your games are updated and run properly. So do a sample run here. I'll go ahead and launch into this and just kind of make sure it didn't mess up anything. I know my frames in Minecraft should be probably between 40 and 60 because I got a bunch of custom stuff, uh, shaders and whatnot loaded in Minecraft. Uh, but this is a good little test after loading a new driver. So we'll go on the multiplayer in our official server, minecraft.christitis.com. And with that, let's go ahead, just run around and see what we got. Uh, FPS wise, we're looking pretty solid. And yeah, we're, we're good. So you'll see right here, we're at a little bit more performance uh, than I think before. Uh, this is a pretty graphic intensive with like the God rays and stuff. And this is a pretty small like studio PC. So overall FPS wise, this is pretty awesome. So we've done that, we've done our updates. What's next? Now, 
I always say look at your repositories before doing any updates. One thing I probably should have mentioned prior to this, let's go into our actual update system. Um, since I'm using Arch, it's Pac-Man, but if you're using Debian or Fedora, uh, Fedora, you're going to be yum. And I'll put all the stuff down in the description, but uh, you'll go into usually most people probably be etc, apt, and then sources.list and also sources.list.d directory with its own independent files. Now, Pac-Man and Arch based systems, it's a little more simple. So we'll just uh, nano into our etc pacman.comp file. This kind of tells us what repositories we're actually using in here. So we can go into the repositories and say, okay, we're not using testing. We have extras included, uh, community testing's off. We have community, uh, we have multi-lib enabled, um, which multi-lib's like 32-bit and 64-bit, and then nothing crazy. We don't have any custom repositories in here, and this is kind of what you'd want uh, as far as everything in here. I love it, it looks good. So that is our Pac-Man deal. You can look at what repositories you have enabled. If you have a whole bunch of custom repositories and you're having problems, look to what's giving you the problem and then disable it. With that problem disabled, uh, you'll easily be able to do another update and go. Now, if it's a Debian-based system, which we'll go ahead and go into my main PC here. And this one is actually running Ubuntu, believe it or not. All right. Uh, this will show us, let's go sudo apt update and kind of show you what a standard update would look like on a Debian-based machine. Let's see how much uh, packages and things that I might be missing. And during the update process, you can see it all in there and say, hey, what, what's going on with that? And I can see already we have a couple warnings, which let's go ahead and clear those out because we shouldn't be seeing any kind of uh, warnings when it comes to this. It says multiple times in sources.list D, Google Cloud Platform list one and etc sources.list Google Cloud Platform dash SDK, it's declared. So let's go into this directory and see if we can't clear up these warnings. I don't like any warnings when doing any updates. So CD, etc, apt, sources.list.d, we'll do a listing. And let's take a look at the actual Google Cloud dot dash a sdk so we'll go nano google cloud sdk and we can see it duplicated this line for whatever reason something happened and we didn't do it as sudo so let's let's go back and add sudo let's clear out this line and save this now let's do sudo apt update it duplicated that one line so it threw errors when we were doing updates which is no good we don't want that and now since we did another update it it did it. Now, what happens if you do an update in like the cache or whatnot's bad? You can easily do what's called a clean, which is sudo apt clean and clean this out or auto clean to clean out old dead repositories or packages that are no longer used or have a newer package available. This, this clears out all that old stuff, which is good. And another good one is sudo apt auto remove. This looks through the system and says, hey, is there anything bad in here that we need to remove? It would go ahead and remove those. So that's a good little uh, tidying up type of system right there. As you see, there was all these other things in that uh, sources.list directory. Let's do a listing again. These are all my external repositories that are being used. So I can tell you what each one is real fast. The cloud-sdk is my access to all my virtual server, uh, virtual private servers on cloud, uh, Google Cloud. I use those for business uh, to administer certain websites and other things. And then we have the Caden Live Ubuntu. Uh, this gives us a newer version of Caden Live. I like to run the latest and greatest, so I have a specific repository for it. Uh, the Lutris. A repository. This is great if you're doing any gaming on uh, your system. Typically, you'll have the Lutris repository. And then next up is Nextcloud, getting all the Nextcloud client installed, which I use Nextcloud everywhere now. It's what I use instead of Dropbox and those types of things. Uh, OIBAF Ubuntu graphics drivers. This is more up to date AMD drivers. I have an a Vega 64 on this system, and I want those drivers in there. And then we have the GIMP uh, 
repository here, which the dot saves aren't used. Those are like backup files, so pay no attention to those. But this would go ahead and give me the latest and greatest GIMP. By default, um, GIMP uses, I believe, 2.8, and now it's on 2.10. So uh, I like 2.10 a lot better than GIMP 2.8. So I always add that repository so I can get the latest GIMP version on this box. And then we have TG2008. Now that's kind of nonsensical. However, this actually gives us our um, time shift. I use time shift on all my computers because guess what? I do a lot of crazy things. I do a lot of updates. I do a lot of package installs. And I know I'm going to break my Linux install occasionally and having a backup for that time and date that I can just roll back and go, okay, everything's all right with the world. It's as if I didn't do whatever crazy thing it is I did. And then if you're not sure, let's say you didn't know what that TG2008 was, you can go ahead and cat it and just see what it's actually referring to. And then you can refer to that website and take a look. So with the cleaning of your repositories, you should have a more simple install. Other things that I won't actually show on the screen here is just purging old packages. If you have a program you've installed, so right here I have HTOP. Let's say I don't use HTOP or Conky. Uh, let's go ahead and purge those packages. We can just do our package manager of choice. And this is just a dash R for remove. And then let's say Conky. And in this one says, hey, there's dependencies that would, uh, would break if I remove Conky, which I probably don't want to do that. So let's remove HTOP. I know that's an independent program. And we can just say, hey, do you want to remove these packages? We'll say yes. It removes HTOP. And then we don't have any issues. So if we go back into our utilities, you'll see HTOP is no longer there. And there's other stuff you can remove. Um, let's say Conky Manager is probably one I need to remove out of here too. So let's just go Conky Manager. And we'll say ahead, go ahead and remove that. And let's try and remove Conky now. Yeah. So the Conky Manager was having problems. So now we've installed uninstalled Conky. We've installed uninstalled Conky Manager. We have uninstalled HTOP. Just going through and kind of cleaning up some of these uh, programs is important because you don't want to bloat all this stuff up. If there's something in here you don't use or never have used, chances are you probably should uninstall it. So there's a couple instances where you probably don't, like KGPG, this is actually a key system that you probably wouldn't know not to remove, so don't do that, don't remove that. Uh, KFind, and some other things are integrated into this desktop environment that we don't want to remove. But for the most part, if you've installed it and you don't use it, remove it. And some stuff you can uninstall and strip down even further. Like there's a lot of uh, KDE, stuff I don't actually like, like Kmail and other things, and I've actually already removed them from this system. This is a pretty bare bones system install. But clean up those packages, remove that old stuff out of there, and remember, always back up your stuff before starting any kind of cleanup because you never know when you delete something you need and you need to go back to it. So do the cleanup and then do your testing. So there you have it. These are the small tips I do with every Linux install just to make sure it's running in tip-top shape. I absolutely love uh, just getting in there and doing it. And I always recommend cleaning out old packages as you install them just because, well, they can bloat up your system just like a Windows install gets bloated up. However, you can actually truly uninstall programs and purge them in Linux, which makes it much more powerful because you can run the same version of Linux for 10 years if you want. Uh, you just got to do some updates from time to time to keep it as secure as possible. However, with all this said, is it possible to run a Linux box for 10 years straight without ever rebooting? And the answer to this question is yes. There's instances of that happening. That's how awesome Linux is. However, if you're using it as your daily driver, you're installing and uninstalling software, I highly recommend using these tips because it'll help you out. But let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below. I'm always curious to hear from you guys because you always have some of the best suggestions because I'm sure there's some tips and tricks that I didn't mention in this video that you know about. So let us know. And a big shout out to my patrons. Without you, I couldn't make videos like this one. And I'll see you in the next one.